So we're 24 hours away until the 2024 NFL Draft and the Indianapolis Colts on the 15th selection. As a Colts fan myself, I want to go over in this video what I would love to see the team do. We're also going to talk about the outlook for next season with Anthony Richardson being fully healthy. We'll talk about the schedule, a little bit about this past season. Of course, the Colts won nine games. They missed out on making the wild card. But overall, it was a great season. Shane Steichen completely changed the culture, turned it around for the better. The Colts, they've got seven draft picks. We know that this offseason, they haven't been too aggressive going out and getting Roquan Davis and Joe Flacco and, of course, some other additions like you know, Tevin Bryan and re-signing Tyquan Lewis and Pittman and more and Stewart and Blackman. Losing Zach Moss and Gardner Minshew definitely hurts. I thought Moss was incredible. He stepped in for Taylor and was just absolutely balling out and then Gardner Minshew same thing for Richardson but in the NFL of course it's a business we understood that those guys were going to go and try to become starters on a different team but for the Colts the biggest thing for them in the draft is going to be addressing the cornerback position it's going to be addressing the wide receiver position I also think that we need help uh, on the edge I mean don't get me wrong Samson Ebukam was fantastic and Quiddy Pay had a good year as well but I'm not sure if Pay is going to be a part of our future the Colts have some time before they need to make a decision on the fifth year option for pay which would cost them 13.387 fully guaranteed for the 2025 season yeah the thing with pay is he hasn't exactly reached his ceiling as a pass rusher remember he was a first round pick and i want to say the 2021 nfl draft and he did put together a good season last year going out and getting eight and a half sacks but i think the colts could definitely upgrade there there's a reason why they were very interested in daniel hunter they actually offered more money than the texans did but the colts they definitely could use a ton of help on the edge it's not a weakness per se it's just longevity and trying to improve on one of the most important positions in the game you've got quarterback you've got tackle you've got edge and then to that point you're talking about receiver you know, defensive line in the Colts last season they did get a lot of sacks but they definitely could improve and I, I could see the Colts absolutely going out there and using the 15th pick on an edge layout to lot to in my opinion is a top 10 player in this draft it's just that there is going to be concerns medically with him it's the same thing with Michael Penix if it wasn't for the medical concerns he would go a lot higher in the draft and you have four season ending injuries that is definitely going to be a red flag to NFL teams and that's the same thing for layout to lot to but at the same time, if guys do fall down the board, we could be talking about Dallas Turner. Uh, we could be talking about going and getting a guy like a Jared Verse, who, who's more powerful than Turner, not quite the athlete. But it just depends on your scheme. And, and for the Colts defense last year, it was pretty atrocious, very atrocious. I mean, atrocious is honestly putting it lightly. Overall, Gus Bradley wasn't able to play to his full scheme. And the Colts only were rushing four as well which means that, okay, well, now you've got seven guys in the back end in the secondary, but it just really didn't matter. It really didn't matter. I mean, the Colts defense, trying to pull up the stats. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, the Colts defense ended up finishing 28th in terms of points allowed defensively. Very, very bad. The Colts, they were top 10 in scoring. If you're a top 10 scoring team in the NFL, normally you're going to win a lot of games. And the Colts, they did win nine games, but they didn't make the playoffs. So if the defense had just been a little bit better, then they would have put themselves in a situation where they would have made the playoffs. And that's going to be the goal for next season. The goal for next season should be winning the division. I mean, we get that the Texans are one of the, the best teams in the NFL just because of the offseason they've had in C.J. Stroud and they won a playoff game. But the Colts, we just continue to forget that they lost their starting quarterback in Anthony Richardson against the Titans that was like five games into the season not to mention if Richardson left multiple games before that early the Texans game the Jaguars game on that final drive so the Colts is, and Jonathan Taylor also missed the first four games of the season so if the Colts can go out there and improve on both sides of the ball and stay healthy they're going to be in a great spot but the biggest need to me for the Colts is the cornerback position. I know a lot of people argue it's safety. A lot of people argue it's receiver. Colts do have depth, but it's just per se, they don't have reliability is how I would phrase it. Juju Brenz, I like. I also like Kenny Moore. I think he's one of the best nickels in football. But when you're relying on Dallas Flowers, who is coming off of an Achilles injury, he's also was undrafted um, a few years ago, of course. And then I actually really do like Jalen Jones. He was a seventh round pick out of Texas A&M last season. Great in coverage. He's also a good gunner on special teams. But can you rely on him in a division that has Trevor Lawrence, CJ Stroud, and Will Levis? I mean, one of the most up and coming QB divisions in football. I personally don't know. You know, Ronnie Harrison Jr. I thought stepped in and played well, essentially kind of was replacing 
uh, Shaq Leonard, if I'm being honest. Nick Cross is good, a good depth piece. Can he become a starter is the question. Julian Blackman bringing him back on a one-year deal was huge because if it hadn't been for that, the Colts would have had to address safety very early on in the draft. And it's just not a deep safety class. The secondary to me, it's not good enough to be able to win in this division. And I think CJ Stroud is going to have a fun time picking apart this unit just because the, the Texans went out there and they got Stephon Diggs. Of course, they're going to be getting Tank Dell back from injury, and they've got Nico Collins to win over a thousand yards, and he's a very good receiver. Uh, Dal uh, Dalton Schultz ended up coming back for the Texans. I just don't know if this secondary will be good enough, but it does have the potential, and the Colts have seven picks, so they can make it better. But at number 15, there was a point in time where I was saying just take the best corner available at all costs, but I don't know how much a rookie corner would truly help this unit because the thing for the Colts secondary is they need a veteran in it. They need a veteran corner that can come in with experience like a Stephon Gilmore, for example. I don't know how much of an impact Quinion Mitchell would make out of Toledo, even though he's a great athlete, he's got good size, speed. He's definitely like, I'm not gonna say the perfect corner, but he's the most well-balanced corner in this class. Nate Wiggins has been falling down the board. There was a point in time where he was the number one corner, but then he tested and it was his measurements came in and it was like, I'd rather just have Quinion Mitchell. He's a better athlete and better dimensions. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry, yeah, like, you know, Cooper DeGene is probably going to go somewhere from a 20 to 25 type of range. I think he's good. But the Colts, they should take the player that gives them the most potential to explode. And to me, that's not a corner. To me, that's going to be Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. I don't know if the Colts would take a receiver here because it's, they've already got Pittman, Pierce, and Downs. I think the Colts definitely would be looking at edge. Maybe they'd be looking to... Uh, offensive line certainly probably isn't going to be on the table just because the Colts already have a good offensive line and it bounced back. It was horrible. Um, I, you know, honestly, I don't think the offensive line was necessarily horrible with Matt Ryan. It's just he didn't offer any mobility. Now, Gardner mentioned Anthony Richardson can get out of the pocket and make plays and make your line look better. Matt Ryan certainly can't. There's so many good players on the board here. To me, though, it should be a receiver because I don't want to just mimic or copy the Texans and be like, oh, well, the Texans brought in Stephon Diggs, the Colts. Now they need a receiver to try to match that. It's That's not the case. It's more so of in the NFL, you need skill positions that can make plays, that can win routes, that can get open, that can create. And Anthony Richardson should be the number one priority right now. If you draft a defensive player here at 15, you're basically saying that we don't want to fully maximize Anthony Richardson and I get the defense last season wasn't the greatest but I would want to go out there and maybe the deepest wide receiver class ever and get a top four guy in it because the top five receivers in this class in no particular order Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr. and then you've got of course the stud out of Washington and Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr. and then to that point it's extremely debatable I would probably go Adonai Mitchell maybe you guys would go uh, Lad McConkey. I don't think Troy Franklin's in that type of range. I like Lad McConkey. I think he's going to be a star in this league uh, wherever he ends up going. But if the Colts do end up with Brian Thomas Jr., that's a huge upgrade over Alec Pierce because, uh, first of all, he's a six foot three ran a 4-3 at the combine, but his deep threat ability is no joke. I mean, he had the most touchdowns in college football last season. He goes out there and he scores 17 touchdowns. I get that he had Jaden Daniels, who's going to be the second pick in this draft, throwing him the football, but Thomas Jr., his ability to get open, to just take the top off of the defense, it's going to create for guys like Pittman. It's going to create for guys like Josh Downs. And if you have three receivers that can win, it's going to make Richardson's life a lot easier because we know Richardson can throw the football deep. We know that he can throw the ball Ball, on an absolute rope I mean laser but it's just give him the best chance to succeed the offensive line for the Colts I like the tight end position is weak for the Colts but I mean it could be a lot worse like the Colts really it's, they don't have the worst tight ends uh, I mean of course I do think that Molly Cox is more of a blocker and uh, Jelani Woods is coming back he looks healthy I've been seeing his workouts on social media Will Mallory was like a late pick last year and then Kylan Granson's okay these tight ends, yeah, not the best, but I mean, if Jelani Woods can somehow just find a way to stay on the football field and then you bring in Brian Thomas Jr., well, now you've got one of the most explosive offenses in football. We haven't even talked about Jonathan Taylor, the best player on the offense in Jonathan Taylor, what he's been able to accomplish. I mean, this guy's just different, goes out there and puts up a buck 80 on the Texans in that last game. I mean, he just left it all out there. And of course, the Colts did not go to Taylor on that final touch of the game offensively, which yeah, it sucked, but at the same time, they had a wide open Tyler Goodson. 
so you can't really hate on it. It was just a miscommunication uh, with, the, with the ball placement. But yeah, the Colts next season, absolutely. I have faith in them to win this division. I have a $300 bet on it. So um, whether or not that ends up paying off, I guess we'll wait and see. But I believe if the Colts can stay healthy. They can beat anyone in the AFC.